What's going on, guys? Time for a little bit of a recap and update about where we are in the market. So uh, another beautiful red close here coming down, third red day in a row. And coming up to, I think, almost two weeks full red, yeah. And uh, usually we don't get too many more than like two, three red weeks. Now, um, we've been planning for a bounce here quite uh, soon. Of course, not a anything but a temporary one. Let's go back to the daily chart and talk about it. Um, so we've been coming into some major supports and some divergences as price action um, permitted since August, September. And then, of course, October, we were pessimistic and looking for the close to end of the year downside, right? And now you notice we're getting lower highs, lower lows, right? And divergence because price action is going lower with lower highs, right? But we're starting to level out here on some oscillation indicators, okay? Now, this is pretty basic stuff. Everybody should be watching this. This is um, regular old bread and butter. But most importantly, that 408 gap is coming up very close on the market. So let's get into the intraday as we've seen our larger holds here coming into Mr. Powell with a potential rate pause, right? So <clears throat> uh, what I left you guys uh, last time here, we just looked for the uh, push back down, rallied 200, and then of course, we just used this very simple over under 414.14, was right here. That was our gold level and 2618 for the day. So anything above that, you'd be looking long for some more retrace down, obviously down. And we had a really good metrics to uh, support this one, especially in the five minute. We are very biased on the Mac watching those line crosses. And then of course you can just see that perfect divergence on the RSI as well. I'm getting um, one, two and three, two and three lower highs there um, with really good price action. So uh, bottom of the channel as well. If you notice in the RSI, we've spent most of our time on the RSI's bottom channel and not so much time on the top. So again, downtrend more or less eminent, right? <clears throat> so that came all the way down to almost the gap top, shied it a little bit. Now this is the next big gap right here, 408.67, 407.23. This is the next gap zone on the daily on SPY. Now we're coming into you know, uh, Powell coming up this week and we have a couple different metrics to very, very closely pay attention to. And I, and I, and I was talking about some, uh, exponential volume supports and heavily traded zones we're coming into right now in the futures. <clears throat> so I just want to explain that a little bit, uh, cause we had some questions on that. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of the TOS here. We're going to go to trading view and, um, I'm going to use some volume profile zones instead. Uh, we could just use the bottom of the volume, but, um, in the entirety, this would just be a little bit easier for uh, the example. So I'm going to jump into here. And if you don't know what uh, volume profiles are, you got a start point and end point on a profile. So you can do start and end, kind of like Fibonacci. And then in between that zone, which you draw, right? So I'm taking the bottom and then the top of our rally right here. And then it finds the highest traded volume in that zone. So if we start here and finish here, we are getting the highest amount of volume traded from those two points of interest, right? Just like a Fibonacci would be drawn. Okay, so in the midst of this, using these volume profiles, this is another reason why I said we have an immense amount of over under, right? So if we zoom in here, we're looking at the daily chart still, and look at the volume, right? This consolidation zone, which we had hit many times before, we had top here, top here, top here with consolidation, long consolidation, and then the big breakout, right? So a lot of the times, uh, people don't understand these are um, uh, flushed out market orders that, that move, right? Limit orders get stuck, market orders um, move. And we get these huge zones of interest of volume that we had to pay attention to. Now, again, they show them on the bottom right here. It's just a little bit easier to show a volume profile uh, than it is bottom of the volume. It's, you know, same old volume for this example. I'm gonna keep it on the volume profile. But um, so these large point of interest here, rejection, 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 and then the long consolidation right there, that is where the highest amount of volume is traded. So if you stretch it out a little bit, it gives me a POC, right? <clears throat> POC is the point of control, highest control volume. So if I stretch it out a little bit, this is the highest point of volume traded in between market lows, market highs that we have current. Okay. So if we stretch that out, you could use that as a zone. So we're going to come here. We're going to zone this volume bar out if you wanted to. And we said, well, this is the pocket of volume that is one of the highest traded zones. Now, of course, we got a couple of them right there and we're slowly coming into that. And, you, and how the volume, um, oscillation works here and um, I'll get into the others next. Notice the, the rollover points here, right? So some of the gaps that we had left up here <clears throat> on the roll and go uh, on SPY, this is ES right now, but uh, some of these lower highs, you can see where the volume association was right here during that. So when we had a breakdown, 
and then we had the retrace. What did it retrace into, right? So if you look to the left on the volume, let's say we come in here, grab the highest point of interest of volume here, and we got one right here. So <clears throat> when price action broke from the highs, right? Because we're assuming August, September, October, volatile mines coming back down, mostly September, August, uh, or September, October, not so much August. That was kind of an uh, early treat uh, for the Halloween there. But this volume here, highest point of interest from the top, broke down, and then you see the zone, right? That is the decision. That is our over under level. So if price action flew back up into there, rejected, gapped up, flew up in here, and then fell, right? And you can tell by this thing getting extremely tired, utilizing a break through the zone, broke. So here's that break from highs. Find support right here. Look to your left, where's support? Huge volume zone, right? Big old volume. Pushed back to next POC control point, highest amount of volume, and confirmed the drop, right? And then so on and so forth. Same thing, found support a little bit here. Look to your left, high volume zone, right? Came back up, where did it reject? Again, resistance, high volume zone, right? Nothing goes in a straight line, we trend. So coming back down to the highest amount of volume traded in this whole zone is this guy. So what do you expect, right? You expect this to be a temporary bounce point building, right? Because of volume. So you have this immense amount of volume traded here where we have tons and tons of top rejections and consolidation reports, not to mention um, anchor view apps. As you can see here, our low anchor view app back down here, which got misplaced a little bit. Let me get back to here. There we go. We have the center. Uh, let's lock that if we can. We have the center coming up as support. So we know once we get inside the anchor zones, right, we usually navigate, um, we walk ourselves back. So here is the top of that anchor zone here. Broke and boom, now we're in the center, right? So if we're utilizing the bottom anchor, this is the top, this is the bottom, the plus one, minus one, this is our center. So whenever we lose the top, we usually backtrace to, boom, the center. So if we mess around here for a little bit and the Powell day comes up and we get the push, you're gonna be looking for that temporary bounce area, right? So let's take a peek at what that looks like in SPY as well. And I will redraw everything for you here uh, if you want a mini lesson. Uh, so I'm not gonna do my predictions, it'll be all lesson. So come back, boom, boom. Okay, so the ultimate high lows in how we got all that. So we do it on the S&P. Um, geez, these both got messed up. These must be anchored from the weekly, that's why. Boom, and lock, okay. So we're coming down to that purple zone. This is the SPY now. Um, same exact thing, so what I do um, if you want to get these uh, volume profiles, you're going to come up and you're going to grab the anchor one here and you're going to just find a high point and a low point. Boom. And that's going to give you the anchors. If you want my settings, I like it when they're thin. So I give them about 33 to 35 out. I mean, however tall you want the bars, that's going to be the width of the percent of the bars. Um, most importantly, the POC line and having the POC line extended, that gives you the highest point of volume in between these two. And of course, um, inputs for me, row size, that's what I was talking about before, not percentage wise. Uh, that's gonna be your, how big you want these guys to stick out, how chunky they are. I like them in the low 30s. Um, I like the row layout at ticks. I do not like number of rows. These make the bars very fat. Now you can use these, but it just doesn't pinpoint enough uh, for me. I like to use the ticks. Um, and I use volume at total, so we don't have up and down volume mixed in there, so there's a bunch of just random colors. I just, just total all the volume together, that's it. So my three settings are literally ticks, early 30s, total volume, Everything else is up to you as far as you want coloring and everything else, doesn't matter. All you wanna see is that high amount of volume. So again, SPY with that indicator, top to bottom, let's take a peek at what we got coming up. So we have this gap, this is our next gap obviously coming up on SPY, we're very close to that. So if we shy this, that's gonna be very interesting. We're just gonna have price action coming down from these lower high and lower lows. We're coming into this gold level, this is our POC, right? Point of control, mega volume, huge support. Not to mention we have our center um, oscillation, right? And a gap right here. So lo and behold, if we shy the gap, right? Push into the gap and then have a whole other rally before it wants to come down further, so be it. If it goes bullish from here, ends up being end of the year rally into 2024, then eh, we got something to worry about. These are the two points of interest that we have to figure out coming into the Powell man next week and how he's gonna kick all of this off uh, for us. So literally that's 
just a couple really quick key points for you guys on volume and control and where we're headed. Uh, and let's talk about a couple other bearish indicators that are going to help us um, with this turnaround. So we have volume, we have the RSI, obviously, we have um, a whole bunch more big player indicators here. So remember when we went through these, MAC and RSI are both very low. Let's take a peek at the 10 year, right? Our inversion yields. So we were thinking, oh, this moved again. All right. We were thinking upwards of like 4.8 to 5.25%. That was about, you know, once we get into that next 5% territory, that's a lot, right? Um, we're looking at the daily chart now. And for a few days here, we're getting some divergence here. Look at the Mac. So when the 10 years go down, right? US 10 years, that's bullish for the market, okay? We're getting a lower high right on the Mac. Histogram there, look at the RSI, same exact thing, okay? Lower high, we're getting divergence in price action on oscillation indicators, just like ES and just like SPY, right? Higher lows and higher highs, not so much on our indicators. You know this is divergence, right? So we are looking at the 10-year turning around. That is an extremely bullish sign. Um, oh, I closed TUS. Maybe we can get it on here real quick. If you go to some of the um, bonds like TLT, TLT is one that we always follow and always have charted up here. Ooh, I'm still using. Boom, there we go. This is another one you can see side by side, hopefully. Click this one, Spy, I'm still learning trading view. There we go. Let's go to a little faster of a time frame, four hour. And then this box, four hour. Cool. This is another thing here on the four hour. You're gonna see Spy on the right, TLT on the left. And again, what is this? Divergence, high lows, higher highs. We have, we follow TNX, TLT, 10 years, two years, gold, um, and importantly, the VIX. So we'll cover that one um, next, right? So this is just another piece to the puzzle, higher lows coming in hot. I know it's more of a coil. You're getting lower highs as well here on TLT, but we're having mass divergence. That's the point, okay? So we are dead on RSI, even on the four hour. We need a little bit of help on the reversal here soon. And coming into this gap, 408, that could be. Now, TLT is stopping the dumps so far, but one of the major metrics. Now, last but not least, we got the volatility index. I think I already have that one up. There we go. Do, do, do. Back to one real quick. All right. And let's go intraday. And we were talking very closely of the $20 level on the VIX. Now, um, 20, I said, was, was your bread and butter for the last trade day, right? It was all about the 20. If we started to go under the $20 here, um, range back down, great, we had it, it's way down here. If we break back down, that was extremely bullish. We break over 20, it was game over, she's gonna go flying. We got a perfect little bit of a ending downtrend here. This is the five day, five minute. But, let's go a little bit longer standing time frame. Ooh. I'm using these on the 15 and 30. We do have, some topping action mixed with, you know, gaps down to the 19. Now, remember, we put this gap as we have in our TOS, right? We have this gap on VIX, and we have a futures gap. And this is the one that is worrisome, right? The $19 gap. So if the VIX finds this action topping, right? Starts its trail down, which I firmly believe it does finds its love down here at 19, we start that rally this week with the VIX dump back down to 19, and it is solidified with the $20 break. That's gonna be huge. But coming back all the way down to that snap 20, that's gonna be the ending metric. Now, I hope it doesn't take Powell to do so, where we get an actual trade. That would be neat, but the market really doesn't give us what we want all the time. And last but not least, don't remember, we do have this ES gap up here that is a not fill. This was a no gap fill tag, and remember, every first gap fill tag usually does not fill that's the first okay and then of course we had the gap down here and that one had a beautiful roll into friday now last but not least that huge uh anchor that we have that's coming up here at that base oh, um is coveted uh same thing at es so that 4130s low 4120s this is going to be that point of interest where if we dip down a little bit into the gap or shy the gap on spy we have the opportunity for vix to go down to that fill of 19, and then we have this all the way back up towards 4,110 for the futures. So that is all the metrics that we're looking for. Pay attention to that volume, and hopefully we get that confirmation coming into power. Stay tuned for the next.